Good morning. Welcome to another exciting video. We are going to do birch sap. So first thing we're gonna do is collect, then we're gonna RO and boil, and we'll show that whole process from start to finish. Yeah, right up here. I'm coming. It's over my boots. Okay. My feet are cold. <laughs> Shoot. You'll be fine. Does it matter what side we go on? I don't know. Does it matter? Does it matter with maples? It's probably the same as for a maple. I don't think it matters. We'll go here. I forgot a hammer. Oh. Can you run up and grab an orange hammer? Orange hammer, yeah. You can grab my snowshoes from the back of the truck. That'd be great, too. Okay. Thanks. Get your Love snowshoes. You. Can you grab my snowshoes? Oh, man. Should have wear socks. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> Nicely done. There we go. Take two. I should have gotten myself oh. some snowshoes. Oh! <laughs> it's flowing. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It is flowing. Birch sap. Yeah. That's good enough. Oh. Okay, we're not going to go to that one down there. Because <laughs> we have to walk through a lot more snow. Well, it's melted around the base. You coming? Yeah, I keep sinking. Okay. To my knees every step. Happy April. <laughs> You're doing April good. <laughs> At least it's warm out. Don't worry, May is coming. Yeah. Uh, you think it'll be spring by the time we reach May? <laughs> oh. I'm just hoping we can swim by September. Okay. Okay. Practiced. Tree number two. There we go. That's the yellow. Gosh, it's a good looking tree house. Ooh, can't wait to hang out in that net. Actually, it's warm enough today to do that. There we go. All right. It's hot out. Are you recording? Yeah, I'm recording you. Oh, okay. Oh, let's go here. And the, uh, just a standard drill bit. Doesn't have to be a fancy one, but I sharpen it myself so it's nice and sharp. And these are just spacer blocks, so I don't have to think about how deep I'm drilling. <coughs> and you can kind of see, it gets pounded in. There's about an extra half inch to an inch in the tree. So there's plenty of clearance. And if that one's dripping. It's already dripping. So that, that yeah, hole Yeah, this is, one flowed well last year. That hole is definitely correct. So there we go. Sometimes the bag would be overflowing by the time I would collect it every day. So. Sweet. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, you want to do this side of it? Yep. Come back later and do the rest up here. Probably, this seems to be good on the top of the hill here. Well, I think they get a nice amount <laughs> of sun. It? So there it is, so let's go over here. Okay. Wow, look at that, go. Yeah. Okay, yep, there we go. How's it taste? And like nothing. Probably like water, right? Yeah, basically mineral water because there's so many minerals in it. <clears throat> Can you test the but sugar yeah, content? If I had the refractometer, I could test it right now. Look at it go, holy cow. Well, oh. there's no question that that hole and tap is done correctly. Yep. <laughs> All right. It doesn't look like it, but this is shorts and t-shirt weather here. It's gotta be like 60 degrees. Even though there's over 
24 inches of snow on the ground in most spots. We're doing some homeschool stuff today with some kids coming over. I think they're gonna come look at the taps. I think secretly though, that's my wife's plot to pack down a trail. It is 60 degrees right now. Look at the snow. <laughs> this is this is upper Michigan. 60 degrees, shorts and t-shirt, and there's still like two feet of snow on the ground. And I guess that's part of the problem too. Because right now the birch sap is about to start flowing. It hasn't really kicked off much yet. But it's gonna be warm out, like 60 degrees. That will spoil stuff with sugar fast. So even though the birch here is about one fifth the sugar concentration as the maple, it spoils a lot faster because of the weather. What I gotta do next is make a way to um, keep it from spoiling. So check it out. The garbage pail is buried in the snowbank. It's in an ideal location. It's shaded 90% of the time. The little sunlight it gets is from the west and it's just at the end of the day. The garbage bucket is plastic number four, which is low density polyethylene. It is a food grade plastic and a cheap and perfect way to store sap. And that is a nice little advantage of a metal roof. When the weather gets warm, all the snow slides off and I have a nice clean and substantial pile of snow to keep the sap cold. Now the next thing to do is to collect enough sap to fill the pail, run it through the RO, and that will be a batch. Multiple small batches worked well in the past and that's what we will do this year. Pretty cool to see what a few hot days can do. Look at the base of the tree trunks. They're all melted. Pretty cool. This is going to be our collecting tank. Just a quick little aside. This is my favorite thing ever. Just an inline valve and one of these brass nozzles. Together, these things last forever and they're far better than like all those weird multi spray head things you pay 30 bucks for. All right. As you can see, this is a sanitizing liquid, 1% iodine. Nothing crazy in this tank. Should clean up real nice and make a great collecting tank. My wife collected sap today and she liked the barrel. She got eight gallons in it, but she had some criticisms. The first were leaks. This opening leaked. Easy fix, I tightened it down. This opening also leaked, and it was hard to open. This is the solution. A leftover piece of high molecular weight polyethylene. It's been notched and cut to fit and provide excellent grip. Furthermore, there's a red O-ring on here that helps it seal even better. I await her review tomorrow. You're doing good. Looks like I'm needed. Thanks. Never mind. Here it is. Alright, what's the 
still? Um, I need you to hold the sieve because there's bugs. Oh, gotcha. Get out there, bug. A little over 10 gallon here, probably. Yesterday the high was not as warm. It was like 60 something. Today the high was in the 80s. Wow. It was hot. Here's a look at our but it snow was, it situation. It got cold overnight. It was like down to 30 something overnight. So I think that's why it flowed a lot better today than yesterday. I should put my lid back on so I don't get. Here's a quick look at the snow situation. When we tapped, it was two feet deep. Check it out. The high, high areas are snow free. Still over a foot in the valley though. It's snow for <laughs> Our snow reserve is getting depleted. But that's okay. We're gonna do a batch real soon. Yeah, we're supposed to get more cold weather starting Sunday night. Look at that. Signs of spring, finally. Gosh, look at that. You ready to uh, start boiling tomorrow? Cooking. Cooking? Sorry, we don't boil. Looks like a good day for sap. Snow's melting and gosh, it's gotta be what, 65, 70 right now. Not as much in this one. Yeah. Looks like they run better at the top of the hill. Must be getting more sunlight. It's probably right and it's making shade down here. The RO membranes are preserved with about 800 to 900 parts per million sodium hydroxide. The TDS meter helps me determine when the preservative has been flushed out and the RO is ready for sap. It's been about two weeks since we did maple sap last. The meter is now down to 100. <clears throat> I'm collecting the permeate, purified water, in the bucket, discharging the tap water. Once I fill the bucket, I will run another flush. Looking good. Top's not very good on it. That's probably why it doesn't flow. Well, sometimes it's been the fullest one. That's got a good top. And this is one of our high producers. There's that one paper birch down there on the other side of the garden that I collected from a few years ago, and that produced a ton. Well, but then last year it didn't flow like at all, but it was all the yellow birch last year, so maybe we should have just waited. Hey, buddy. You gonna come up? Yep, 
Definitely some bugs in there. Okay, what's your idea? Um, I'm gonna put a match on this okay. fire. Only at the fire pit though, right? Yeah. Because we don't want to start a forest fire. And then I'm gonna put it in and it's gonna light it on fire or some newspaper. Oh, maybe some newspaper. And then some small little twigs. strips of bark, yet yeah, twigs, and then little sticks. That bucket is full of permeate or pure water. Time to finish the flush. Still over half a bucket left. Seven ppm. That's about as clean as it's gonna get. Looks like you're doing much better today. Good Looks fun. good. Right now we're emptying the transport tank pushing some concentrate into the barrel. Uh, 0.6 bricks on yellow birch is our official measurement. The permeate, the purified water, we are collecting into our gallon jugs and that will be saved and used in the little mini ultrasonic humidifier in our incubator. That way we don't end up with all that white calcium powder over everything from the um, precipitation of the minerals. I'm reviewing the numbers. For a concentrate birch of 3.2 bricks, that's 930 parts per million dissolved solids. In maple, I was looking at 180 parts per million. So five times, over five times as much stuff in birch syrup versus maple syrup. And I'll come back and double check that at the very end too. That's all that's left of 40 gallons. Five point five one thousand one hundred and thirty ppm. Last year this was my first batch that I kept under two hundred degrees. It probably got to boiling early okay. on and then I brought it down to two hundred. I don't have any of the lighter birch left. That was my second batch, I kept that under one eighty. And that was a lot lighter. Some people like the darker stuff for a milder, slightly milder, it's still strong flavor. The lighter, I like the lighter. I think this year I'll try and do it all under 180. Well, this is birch syrup glazed salmon, sockeye salmon, cause it was on sale. <laughs> then we got some beautiful, not homegrown asparagus because ours is not poking out of the soil. And then uh, paprika uh, fried, pan fried potatoes from our garden. Almost the last of the potatoes from the garden. Sadly. Yeah. That's about it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hopefully more homegrown stuff in the future. Or home caught, maybe, even. I don't know. We're up to a bricks of six in the bucket. TDS around 1,200. I bumped the pressure up to 145, which is about max for this. And there's just a trickle. That's the concentrate. And then the water, the permeate, just barely anything. So normally I'm running like 25 gallons an hour. Right now, probably like eight, 10. So the pump is working really hard. Part of the issue with the birch is that there's so much stuff in the sap. And that's that TDS, the total dissolved solids. And that makes a lot of extra pressure, a lot of extra work for the membranes, and you can't push it to as high a sugar content as maple. We're gonna make it to the last drop. This is the last little bit that I couldn't suck up. 
not too bad. Now to squeeze every last bit out of the filters, I'm going to bypass, which is what you do when you flush the membranes. Drop the intake in the permeate, or the pure water, and turn it on. And I'm going to sit right here and watch the TDS meter. When it drops to a certain point, I'm going to shut it off. So probably a bricks of about one. 175 is when we our original concentration. So if we drop under 200, yeah, we're going to okay. shut it off because we're at that point just getting too much water. If you can watch your pay, your uh, pot over there just to make sure we don't go over. I'll watch this. Yep. Under four. Under three. Get ready to dump it. I'll tell you when. And we're at 200, go ahead and dump it. A few too many bubbles. Might have to find a dropper. There we go. Final concentration is 4.6 bricks after the flush. Before we pushed out the last of the sugar, it was right around six. All right, I'm under 10. That's good enough for a flush for now. We'll do another batch later, so. Yeah. Last year I did two batches. The first batch I kept under about 200, and then the second batch I kept under about 180. So I'm kind of splitting the difference because it takes forever to cook the sap down when it's like below 180. So I think I'm gonna try and keep it between 180 and 190. So you still get some clarity in the color, so it's not super dark. But um, also it doesn't go super slow either. So we'll see. I think can it's gonna you, turn out. Can you set the temperature and then just like walk away for 12 hours or? Um, no, not with the electric stove. Well, probably any stove because as the quantity diminishes, then my stove does a better job heating it up. So I kind of have to adjust as I go. So as the, as the level gets lower, you can see it's already gone down quite a bit, but as the level gets lower, I'll have to reduce the temperature a bit. And then overnight, I still keep it on, but on like the lowest heat setting. Um, but I wouldn't do that if it was really close to finishing, because that would be pretty risky. But it, it takes me like a couple days at like this low heat setting to get to the uh, actual syrup level. But yeah, look how much sediment is in this stuff. I don't know if you call it sediment, but it's, <laughs> if that's the right word. This must be all like the minerals from the tree and stuff. So I, f I will filter it through some um, cheesecloth or butter muslin or something. Or maybe just some clean dish towels if I don't have the other stuff at the end. But um, yeah, that'll take out some of that extra residue, but still leave in plenty of the uh, flavor components of the sap. Yep. Still not a ton of flavor. <laughs> I mean, you should keep in mind, I'm hoping to get eight to nine four ounce jars out of this. But there was a range that was considered acceptable. And some people with birch like to go a little higher because of the other dissolved solids besides just sugar. It makes sense. It would increase the density of the liquid. Because it'll be sweeter. Obviously, it'll be sweeter if you go farther. Mm -hmm. And because there's extra minerals, maybe you want a little more sweetness. And we never really ran the risk of crystallization yet with last year's batch. That's and we went true. to what level with that? 68, I think. Okay. We could test it. Hey, let's do that. Well, do you have you? Sure. 
I just calibrated my generic refractometer with extra virgin oil, olive oil. And now it reads 71.5 bricks with this olive oil. Okay, you test. So we're thinking 68 is where it's supposed to be at? About, I think it might have been like 67.5 or something. Okay. Here we go. No, it's right about 68. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's kind of a hazy line. It's so I strained it. Um, from the large pot into the smaller pot and this is the residue you can see it was left behind minerals and such actually it doesn't taste terrible <laughs> but um, yeah take out some of that sediment try some sure it doesn't, it doesn't I mean, taste it, bad it looks like mud but it tastes it, it tastes, does taste very minerally I, I feel like I was eating a vitamin almost yeah but there's a little sweetness because obviously some of the um, syrup is attached so it's a to it. chewable vitamin. Yeah, it's a chew. <laughs> it's like Flintstones, birch Flintstones vitamin. Yeah. Good stuff. Good for you. So maybe when I was measuring before, maybe I had it too thick because you gotta like press down, right? Oops. Well, yeah. bubbles will make it fuzzy. That's See, that's okay. good. Yeah. Yeah, see, now it's just above 64, and I just added, like, a few drops of water. <laughs> yeah, you're at 65 about. Yeah. It'll change a little bit as it cools, but not much. Mm -hmm. So I sterilize these in my water bath canner like I would before I would do canning of jellies or tomatoes or whatever. And then I've got the lids in warm water, so they should be soft. And then hopefully, this is in the right temperature range, 180 to 195, hopefully every, everything should seal and um, my jars shouldn't shatter because they were just taken out and they're still warm. And they're also pretty well tempered, so. Yep, they shouldn't shatter anyway. Yeah, so it should seal and be good. Good to go. You're at about 67.5 or so. I, I mean, off now then. honestly, you could probably. I think I'll take off. it. Hey, okay, what was? Uh, out of the way there. Oh, so many bubbles. Oh well. I can go to a different side if you want. No, nope, you're fine. <clears throat> the Shit. bottom of your pan looks pretty unsedimented. You must have filtered a few times. Yeah, like three or four. Remember the vitamins? I do could market that. Birch vitamins, good for you. Well, apparently you can market birch sap <laughs> for like 20 bucks a bottle. You add carbonation though, don't you? I don't that think stuff? so. Oh, you don't? No. Just plain old. So you said about 25 ounces and I said 35 to 36 in my calculations. Yeah. And this is 32 ounces worth of jars. And so I think I might've been a little closer with the mathing. I'm gonna, yep, yeah, some yeah, of my. That seems reasonable. Here. Well, it might not be, it'll be a little cool for bottling, or for sealing, maybe. Some handy canning tools. inch about. I could pop the bubbles. I, I think they're just going to stay there. Yeah. You know what I didn't do? Wipe these a bit. I don't know how important that is, but 
I do it when I'm canning, so I'll do it now. A little bit longer since it was last. All right. Hopefully those see up as they cool down. Thirty ounces. Thirty-two. Are you sure? What's full on there? Actually, I don't know. I can measure one. Got one right up here. Ooh, right at the top. You're right. It's four ounces. It's four ounces. Okay. Yeah. So. Minus about half an ounce from each of eight. So minus four ounces, 28 ounces about. That's what I said. <laughs> said 25. So I made um, pork spare ribs and I glazed them with birch syrup for the last about hour, hour and a half. Yeah, and I put them out twice to add the coating of uh, birch syrup glaze. But previously they had been um, coated with a dry rub and they were cooked at 300 degrees. Fahrenheit. So yep, I don't know how they've turned out. Hopefully good. Mm. Birch syrup makes a great glaze. I'm a fan. The local brewery, this goes great with birch glazed meats. In case you're wondering. So well, what, what batch number is this now? This is the second batch. Okay. And it, this pot is right here. That's the second batch. This is batch three. Batch two is getting close. It's really close in bricks to being ready to bottle, but I kept tasting it and noticing it tasted kind of gritty. So I decided to strain it one more time and I strained it through some butter or some muslin. And then I, uh, yeah, this, this is what came off of it. This is all like, what's the consistency? Well, it feels like sand. <laughs> yeah. Sandy Play-Doh. And what's the taste? Um, vitamin-y? Yeah. Um, yeah, vitamin -y. That's a good description. Probably good for you, right? Like, it's all tree minerals. It's crazy, though. Hey, that's my word. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's crazy. It's crazy. But there's even more in here that I could get out of it. It's nuts. I can't believe... Wow, I'm just like, my this, mind is blown by this. And this quantity is from what, a 30 ounce batch perhaps? Well, let's see. Yeah, we'll probably get eight or nine four ounce jars out of it. So that's like three and a quarter ounces by volume, a total of syrup per jar. So yeah, 30 ounces of volume. Well, less now. <laughs> less now. That would have been, that's like almost like the jars I put in it. <laughs> uh, yep. It's impressive to me. But the first batch was nothing like this. So I'm curious to see about batches three and four, what the mineral content is like on those. Me too. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of batches of birch syrup this year. And it was a long time. So let's see, batch one. I think we tapped the day after Easter. That was the warmest weather. We had a... 70.3 was the average high, 42.8 was the average low, and the overall average temperature was 53.3. I had uh, 28 ounces approximately out of that batch. So, yep, then batch two. There was a lot of sediment that I was able to get strained off of this batch. That's the thing that I remember the most about that. I had like more than a half full jar just of sediment. I wanted to save it. It's just a bunch of minerals. But yeah, some, yeah, you can see some stayed, some still stayed behind. 39.3 was the average high, so it was pretty cool during batch two. 27.8 was the average low, and 32.6 was the overall average. That was cold. Interesting. 
uh, batch three was pretty small because that was only like a day and a half or two days of collecting. So yeah, that was the lightest color probably because it was cooking the shortest, I would guess. So yeah, batch three, the temperature, 53.5 was the average high, 34 was the average low, 38.2 was the overall average temperature. So above freezing there. And I only had like 12 ounces total from batch three. Batch four was my biggest batch. It was the last batch. Uh, the concentrate had a stronger smell when it was first brought in to cook after going through the RO. So it had definitely a strong... I don't know how to describe it. It was just stronger smelling. It wasn't bad, but it definitely had more of an odor. And it had a lot of sediment. Yeah, you can see lots of sediment has settled on the bottom. Even though I, I did filter it, I filter all of them like four times at least through the process. But batch four, I had some difficulty getting it filtered. It would clog up. And so then I ended up you know, like squeezing it through, and then some of the sediment came through, obviously, with, with the syrup. So my assumption is that that would be the strongest tasting. I don't know, we didn't do a taste test comparison. But the average high for batch 4 was 40 degrees, so it wasn't super warm. And the average low was 26, so it was below freezing again. And then 31.4 overall average, that's crazy. And then 39 ounces total from that batch, so it was a big batch. Thanks for hanging out and checking out our process for making birch syrup. I hope you learned something, and if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Take care, and until next time.